All right, guys, so the reviews for Death Stranding are finally here, and the first thing I want to say is, yes, I am aware that I was wrong with my prediction. I predicted the game would get a 93 on Metacritic. Unfortunately, it seems as though I was off the mark by about 9 points, which I don't think is too bad. I'm not going to lie to you. I did expect this game to definitely score higher than 84, just because it seems like there's really something awesome here. And what makes this conversation interesting when we go over all of these different reviews, I'm not going to be going over all of them because looking here, there's about 71 total reviews and it's sitting at an 84. But what's interesting is you will find that this is a very polarizing game and you can definitely tell when reading certain reviews from different individuals that this is going to be the type of game where you're really going to have to figure out for yourself is this the type of game that's going to be for me because it's not a traditional game it's a very unique game but more importantly more than anything else something that I really discovered when reading all of the reviews and listening to the reviews and hearing what people had to say about this game the thing that really stood out to me is that it is exactly what I thought it would be and that the main thing that you're going into Death Stranding here with is you're going to be looking for an experience something that is meant to make you feel a certain way something that is meant to ev evoke uh, certain emotions from you and frankly it's not the type of game where you're going to jump in and be like i'm ready to have some fun because that's not necessarily what death stranding is trying to achieve now fun is very subjective and as you'll be able to tell here by going over some of these reviews some people certainly didn't have any fun while playing this game but it really seems to me and i am not damage controlling this i'm just being as honest as i can based off of what i'm reading and hearing and seeing it seems that people who in, didn't enjoy this game and couldn't find any fun out of this game are people who felt like they couldn't resonate with it and resonate with the deeper meanings and and uh undertones and, and messaging that it w this game is trying to get across. And so it creates a very polarizing but very interesting conversation. Um, if you look at the reviews here, out of the 71 total reviews, it says that 59 were positive, so that's about 83% of them were positive, which is great. About 11 of them were mixed, which is about 15%, and only one negative review, which makes up 1%, which I don't even know if I'm gonna bother going over this review the one negative review in this video because it's so terrible that I feel like it may warrant its own video because this is where we really need to kind of acknowledge that it's individuals who do this type of stuff that really bring things down to a level they just don't deserve to be at so maybe we'll make a separate video on that maybe I'll mention it at the end of this we'll have to see I don't want this video to end up being like 30 minutes long but anyway there are a lot of reviews here that are 10 out of 10s. Gaming Age, 10 out of 10. Game Planet, 10 out of 10. Gamer Sky, 10 out of 10. There's a bunch here. And what I want to do is read a few of the excerpts of what these individuals who reviewed this, who are giving it 10 out of 10s, what they're saying positively about it. Uh, Gaming Age says, I was hooked from the first time I saw the title screen until the credits rolled 72 hours later. Death Stranding is immensely satisfying and everything I could have hoped for and more from Kojima Productions. Game Planet says, while Death Stranding will surely be the most divisive game of this generation, there's no arguing that it offers new ideas on pushing the medium forward and shows that games don't always typically have to be fun. Now, I've seen some people poking fun at this statement, saying, what do you mean games don't always have to be fun? I mean, come on, guys. You, you know what this individual here is saying. You know they're trying to convey that when you experience certain things like okay the best and most recent example i can give is when i saw the movie joker that didn't feel like a fun experience to me that didn't feel anything but intriguing uncomfortable intense but it was honestly the best movie i've seen in years but i didn't need i didn't go into that movie saying i better have fun with this i better feel good about this because that's not that's not always what people are looking for. Sometimes you got to look for the deeper or even darker things. And in this case, I don't think Death Stranding is a dark game. I'm not saying that tonally Death Stranding is similar to Joker, but I'm just saying it's going for something a little bit different. In fact, I've seen a lot of people describe this game as a game where it makes you realize that how important human connection is to have hope. It's about love. It's about compassion. And those are really interesting things to me because frankly, like, it's it's a big thing for a game to really kind of 
build uh, an, an entire game around those themes and and successfully pull it off. So I just wanted to rant a little bit on that there because I've seen some people poking at this and it's just like listen everybody's idea of what fun is is subjective. It doesn't you know something can be enjoyable. It doesn't necessarily have to be fun to be enjoyable, right? So uh, moving on from that, Gamer Sky says Death Stranding is a game about connection and it connects not only every character to the game but also every gamer together. It's a masterpiece with great philosophy thoughts and combines great storytelling with innovative gameplay. Uh, and then Trusted Review says Death Stranding is unlike anything else out there right now. It's huge, innovative, and utterly unashamed of what it wants to be. Kojima Productions is heavy-handed in its implementation of modern political themes, but they tie into the narrative and involve the player in ways that feel compelling. Game Revolution, you know, these are all 10 out of 10 reviews, by the way. Game, game Revolution says if there's one game you should play this year, it's Death Stranding. It's a system seller, and I love it. And then Push Square says, following years of mysterious anticipation, Death Stranding delivers on all fronts. An accomplished, fascinating set of gameplay mechanics allow you to make deliveries the way you want to, while social, social features let the game live on once you put the controller down. It may become slightly tiresome as you hit the halfway mark, but the phenomenal narrative is is on hand to pick things back up again and its outstanding visuals are the cherry on top. Death Stranding doesn't raise the bar for any particular genre, it creates an entirely new one. So those are some of the top ones. Uh, one more I want to read here is from Screen Rant who also gave it a 10 out of 10. They say, Death Stranding is dizzying, unshakable in its belief. It is doing something worthwhile and it's one of the most important games of this decade. So yeah, as you can see here with the really positive reviews, which there's a lot of them, people are the people who are really into this game are basically saying the same thing across the board, where if you're going into this game looking for a traditional experience, looking for something that you've experienced already before, but maybe is more refined, you're not going to find it. You're just not. This is going to be something that is, it's an emotional experience. It's something you have to get invested into. And it's something to where if you're going into it looking for just a 30 seconds of fun type of gameplay loop or something that even feels super satisfying in terms of a gameplay loop, you may not find that here with Death Stranding. The idea of this gameplay is supposed, the, the gameplay is supposed to be driven by the narrative. And the narrative is really supposed to get its hooks into you to make you feel certain things while you're on your journey here. And so even some people, you know, even some of the top reviewers can admit that, yeah, the gameplay can be a little bit tiresome at moments, which honestly, you, you already know this. If, you're, if you've been paying any attention to Death Stranding recently, you know that the gameplay is easily the most polarizing aspect of this title. And it's one of these situations where you have to determine what type of gamer you are. Are you somebody who's patient and is willing to really get into nuanced, maybe even cumbersome type of gameplay mechanics that seem so simple? Like the one thing I've seen a lot of positive reviews saying here in terms of the gameplay, because we are going to go over the negative reviews as well, is that the gameplay is it's a, it's a type of situation where it's not traditional. You you would look at a landscape and think, okay, I'm just going to go from point A to point B, and that sounds boring, that sounds too simple, but the idea is you have to really pay attention to how you're navigating this. You have to take everything into account. You are given the tools, from what I've read here, to be able to successfully overcome these challenges and the obstacle that is the terrain itself. And it seems like to me, and again, I'm not damage controlling here because I know some people are going to take it that way, but to me it seems like the people who couldn't enjoy the gameplay were the ones who maybe were expecting some more type of combat or some more engaging gameplay where it's like the most engaging thing you're, most, you're probably going to be doing when playing Death Stranding is trying to figure out how do I climb this mountain? How do I get over this valley, right? Like, how do I cross this stream? And that may, that sounds insanely boring to some people, but it's, it's all dependent on what you're looking to get out of the game. I don't, th I think at this point it's safe to say that anybody who's looking for an action heavy game or anything like that out of Death Stranding, that's not what this game is about. It's just not. So, you know, that's something we really have to pay attention to. This is why this game is so polarizing in the eyes of many gamers, even with such a, a good, you know, Metacritic score sitting at 84. 
But anyway, talking more about the review scores here, speaking about IGN for a minute here, there's an interesting thing happening with IGN where apparently, you know, they have a bunch of different branches, the U.S. branch, the Italian branch, and, uh, you know, uh, the IGN Japan and all this stuff. And it seems that almost every branch from IGN gave this game a very, very high score in the high, you know, like 10 out of 10, 9.5 out of 10, and, and so on and so forth, except the... IGN US gave it a 6.8 out of 10 and listen I listened to their review I listened to that reviewer and, and his 10 minute review and what he had to say about Death Stranding and it's really disappointing honestly because you can tell that this person just was not interested in this game you can tell that nothing in this game hooked them and this this was not the type of individual I mean it, it's it's just strange to me because I have to ask myself who do they get to review these games because do you get somebody who who is looking at this and saying this looks like it's kind of boring I'm not really interested in it is that the person you're going to get to review the game that doesn't make any sense to me because to me it, it, it's become pretty clear with Death Stranding as we approach the launch that it's not a game for everybody I mean you don't need reviews to tell you that and it was just depressing to me because I'm listening to this individual at IGN and they give it a uh a 6.8 out of 10, which is just like, I mean, I don't think the game is that bad, right? Like, I mean, the the number one thing I got from this guy who reviewed it, and it's nothing against him, you know, he's entitled to his opinion, just like everybody else is here, right? I'm not trying to condemn anybody, except maybe one individual <laughs> on this list, but it, it became abundantly clear to me that this person was looking for something that was much, that was much less nuanced, where the gameplay isn't as slow. I mean, I've seen so many people say that Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the, sl and I, I can confirm this because I played it, it's one of the slower games you'll ever play, right? Like, there's a lot of moments that just drag, and it's very slow, and it's all about atmosphere, you know, and there's moments where you are alone, and you're not doing anything, and you're just going from point A to point B, and it's kind of monotonous, but did that necessarily take away from the game? It all depends on what type of person you are. To most people, it didn't. To some people, it did. And it seems like with Death Stranding, it's the same exact thing. And so it's just disappointing to me because it's like, I don't know, a lot of people who work at IGN and all these different segments and areas are saying this game's great, this game's amazing, and then you have this one person at IGN that's just like, yeah, this game's boring. And I guess that guy just didn't enjoy it, and that's unfortunate. But um, another review... That's worth pointing out here is GameSpot. Now, I'm pointing out GameSpot because they don't normally... I mean, they gave the game a 9 out of 10, which is kind of rare from them. And what's interesting to note about GameSpot... Now, I listened to this review as well. The individual who reviewed Death Stranding is the same one who reviewed Days Gone. So I was almost like, oh, okay, here. It's going to be interesting to see what this person has to say. Why are they giving this such a high score? Is it for actual good reasons? Or is it for maybe different reasons that we all know what territory we're going into there? Because when you look back at Days Gone and you look at the unfair reviews, in my opinion, that IGN and GameSpot gave them, you'll find that a lot of the reasonings, especially with GameSpot and this, you know, this woman here, a lot of the reasoning they gave as to what made this game not good in their eyes are just reasons that make people scratch their head and be like, how does that take away from the game? Like, what does that even have to do with the game itself, right? And I listened to GameSpot's review, and I'm not just saying this because they gave it a good review, because I was really interested, like, okay, let me hear this one out. It was a, it was a good review. I'm, I'm going to be honest. It was a good review, and I think that the woman did a great job here because she talked really deeply about the gameplay mechanics. She went really in-depth with the story and how very much conveying the fact of what we were talking about here that this is a game that's very much based around uh, the ideas of human connection and compassion and it's supposed to really uh, get deep into your psyche and make you feel something and not everybody's going to be on board with that when it comes to playing a video game and they did a really good job she also talked very much about how the gameplay mechanics are um you know, they're not going to be for everybody, but if you're the type of person who's willing to take your time and get into it, they can be very rewarding. So I just wanted to point that out here. But moving on from that, we're going to look at some of the lower scores or some of the, you know, like 7 out of 10 scores, which it got a lot of. And, you know, Game Informer here says they gave it a 7 out of 10, and they say the real issue is that Death Stranding's gameplay is as simple as it appears to be, and the elements around it, the story, combat, and lackluster mission objectives aren't satisfying enough to anchor the title 
to get the player get players invested. And so that's unfortunate to hear. The one thing I, I have heard with this game is that the mission design is very simple. Like it doesn't deviate from the idea of you are traveling from point A to point B with every mission you're doing. So I could see how that could get very re repetitious and, and, and just kind of, you know, bothersome. When, when you do it enough, but again, it's different for everybody. This individual who reviewed this, apparently um, the gameplay just wasn't enough to get them invested in the game. Uh, let's see, uh, US Gamer says, Death Stranding might be Kojima's boldest game to date. It may also be his most tedious. Either way, it's originally its originality outweighs its sometimes exhausting structure and poor pacing, but only just. Maybe not a game I would recommend to everybody, but certainly one of those more interesting games of 2019. So that's very interesting. And we get to the IGN US review that gave it a 6.8 out of 10, and it says, There is a fascinating fleshed out world of supernatural science fiction to enjoy across its sprawling and spectacular map. So it's a real shame that it's all been saddled on a gameplay backbone that struggles to adequately support its weight over the full, full course of the journey. Um, and then we have some 6 out of 10s. VG247 says, if you do manage to hold out, you will be rewarded with flashes of brilliance. It's just that those flashes are buried as deep as the core story is buried in the endless dialogue. Okay, I mean, it, it sounds to me that this individual hasn't played whoever reviewed this at vg247 have they ever played a metal gear solid game i mean the amount of dialogue that's that's part of kojima's games the dialogue but you know it's not for everybody and that's okay um and then we get to the bottom of the barrel here where you know there's um more just a few here giving it six out of ten saying pretty much that it's not a terrible game in their eyes they just can't recommend it to everybody and they you know it's very clear here and the gist of all this, and again, there, there's one review here that gave it a 3.5 out of 10, which I'm just, I'm going to save that for another rant video because this, this is unacceptable here, but um, it's very clear, and this is where I want to end the video, that it's a, it's a divisive and polarizing game, and there's no doubt about that. I think anybody could have pointed that out before the reviews came out, um, and while I had very high expectations for it, I'm still just as excited as I was. It didn't need to get a 93 in order for me to be excited for it. What's exciting to me, what I'm taking from, from this is pretty much what we've already got. It's that we know that this is going to be a deep game. There's going to be a lot of different themes and messages it's trying to get across. And more importantly, Kojima's goal seemingly with this game is to make the player truly feel something when they're going on this journey. And one of the things apparently that you're going to feel is like a lot of the, the, you know, the effort you're putting in here is it can feel tiresome, it can feel mundane at times, but it's all part of the experience, and it seems that the gameplay is a make-or-break thing for a lot of players here. You're either really going to be able to get into it and love it, because I, I have heard, I think it was Skill Up, Skill Up, his review, which he does great reviews, he was saying how he thought the gameplay was amazing, and he, he loved it, you know? And I've heard other people, like that guy at IGN, say that it was really boring to him. So it's going to be different for each player, but the thing I'm most excited about with Death Stranding is how everything is going to come together and how it's going to make me feel. And I'm going to have to experience it myself and give it my own review and do you know give my own thoughts on it. But overall, it seems like it's generally positive for Death Stranding. And you know, an 84 on Metacritic may not signal a masterpiece to some people, but it seems like the people who really enjoyed it really enjoyed it and it seems like the people who really didn't enjoy it just really didn't enjoy it so that does it for the video guys i wanted to take some time to go over this here some very interesting stuff we're obviously going to continue to talk about death stranding here on the channel as we go forward and again i may make a little rant video because i feel like i have to on this individual uh calling death stranding garbage and giving it a 3.5 out of 10 i think we got to go over that because that is i mean come on look at how much that 3.5 out of 10 is holding back that metacritic score it, it's it's not right man like i don't know how things like this can happen but and it's not just for death stranding it happens for all games i'm aware of that but that does it for the video guys let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments below let me know uh, you know, what, what, it, what reviews you agree with and which ones you don't and if this has swayed your opinion on Death Stranding at all. Be sure to leave the video a like if you enjoyed it. It really helps out. Let's me know you guys are enjoying the content. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.